Inshallah and Ashe. Got out the gate a little slow today. We're having a snow day here, but blessings to you, my energetic beings. Welcome back to The Daily Snippet. I am your host, a practicing holistic medium and subtle energy surgeon, merging the indigenous technologies with subtle energies, the elements, the elemental beings, and actually so much more. But my intention is really to merge the indigenous with the subtle realms to assist you into navigating your prime directive, really just reintroducing you to and through the being that resides within you. My name is Tanya D, and welcome to my virtual medicine room. As we prepare for these threads of this upcoming new year, 2022, the countdown truly is on. Sunday morning, my Meet Me for Coffee show on YouTube is airing. I'm going to be exploring the Water Tiger year um, with Mary Shirtleff, so it really is time to put on our bootstraps. And if you haven't already, please be kind and do subscribe to my YouTube channel, Tanya D. Hit the bell button so you're notified. And also, if you don't mind, please like the video so the YouTube algorithm echoes out to suggest me to other like-minded musers in the galactic universe. The Musing Moon Meditation, uh, this new moon in the season of Capricorn on Sunday, is at the galactic degree of 12. That'll be arriving in your inbox very soon. And if you haven't subscribed to my Musing Moon, Musing, mu musing newsletter, excuse me, please do so you get all the alerts when those uh, Musing Moon meditations are out the gate as well. And also, my immersion, Voices of the Other World, uh, this immersion is a combination of the elemental realm, the beings that are elemental, the subtle energetic fields or centers that I associate or combine with them. Um, so yeah, that's just out the gate. But today, once again, I'm actually going to start off with uh, the cards. Let's see. Hang on. I've got it. There we go. Maybe that's the one. Dee, dee, there you go. The cards of the day. So um, just a nice break, switching things up uh, in the field. But I'm going with my Oracle deck, the mystical magic one, and... Um, we are actually at the cosmic deg degree that relates to the Earth Star. And the first card I have is the corn. The corn is the mother of sustenance and abundance that's tangible, the physical world kind of abundance. So the symbol really represents material prosperity in the world of form, like energy to matter, matter being the form, that provides stability and sustenance to the village. And just knowing, and just knowing that there's always more than enough to go around, and now that we are coming to the close of 2021, you know, we have really planted a beautiful field of dreams. We've all worked hard. Even in the moments where we might have felt like we were losing faith, we all continued to endure through it. So at this moment, the spirit of the corn is coming in to honor and to show us our bounty, our harvest. So it's really a time to really reap the rewards of all of our hard work and also of our trust and of our intuition, right? So whether the rewards were financial or the other kind of prosperity measured and the quality rather than the quantity, you know, there's a big difference there. So just know that having this card show up today is really a blessing. It's a symbol. And also, you know, it's a great idea just to also share your great fortune, share that with others. And I really, I have to tell you, I do offerings quite frequently and I do have actually corn stalks growing in my front yard. They're actually covered with snow right now. Um, however, they are there, they've been watered and it really is like a message to reap those rewards. Um, and actually now that I say that out loud, I have the corn itself out there. So I'm going to go pick those for my offerings as well. But <clears throat> just some info insight there. Then we have water, which um, again, I find curious. If you know anything about the Dagara cosmology, um, the cowrie shell divination practice that I uh, subscribe to, the six and the one are water years, and actually this card has number 61. So we are at the ending of a one year, water. Water in itself symbolizes purification, regeneration, birth, revival, gestation, cleansing, purity, reconciliation, clarity, peace, you know. So it really signifies this evolution or shift from our former self, matter, and to birth a new self into the future. I mean, for myself, I really haven't stopped cleaning different areas and really just cleansing things since the new moon in Sagittarius um, with that boosted eclipse. 
Um, so there's even myths around the world, speaking of great floodings, um, the new life that's revealed, you know, after a great flood. I mean, just look at the snow at Lake Tahoe. Um, the water spirits are heavenly flowing, right? So water really begins without any boundaries. Um, it's boundaryless. It's I associate it water with the moon as well. Um, and it's interesting, that's peeking through. But water begins without boundaries. And as soon as um, it the form has separated itself from the water, then it becomes under the loss of time and life, acquiring those limitations. So, you know, I think of my son always saying out loud that the moment you're born is the moment you actually start dying. That's kind of the energy of this. We come out of the womb. So the card is kind of saying that it's time for a cleansing of all the unwanted energy and the sticky feelings. So um, the reason that's so is because it's reversed, but it's um, something to consider with what water does to the flesh that it does also in sacred ritual to the spirit. So it's like a spiritual cleansing. It's similar to a baptism, but it's the frequency of water. It comes in a variety of forms. I talk about all these forms in um, Uncovering the Secrets of the Other World. I dive deeper into water, the wood of the water, the fire of the water, the earth of the water, the boost of the water, the spirit of the water, all these different um, signatures of water. But it really is this opportunity to get this instantaneous experience of this timelessness, the fluidity, the non-ordinary reality in which our true creation actually takes place. So it's this time where we can have this potential of just being pregnant and birthing anew. Even Carl Jung talked about the material or the maternal womb-like significance of water as this universal symbol. I keep seeing um, spirals for some reason, but water represents the potentiality of existence, right? The birthing of anew. So it proceeds and sustains every creation. So we have this urgency um, and this emergence from its manifestation, this immersion into the uh, dissolution of the form. It's dissolving in a way. Because of this, it's symbolizing regeneration. So it's like saying just to make way for the process where we can expect it to be messy, but absolutely worth it. You know, the magic on the other side, which is what I like to say through the chaos. Then we have the drum, which... Um, Again, it's a super cool card all in itself. Number 15, that also adds to a six. But you know, if you ever really listen to the rhythm of a drum, or it really tunes into the beating heart of the galactic universe, not including our own heart, which is all connected. And if you've seen one, which I should have grabbed mine, it has a wood frame. The wood frame links us to the trees and really helps us journey to the lower world through the system of the roots. Um, and also to the upper world through the branches and the leaves kind of singing and glistening in the wind. But the skin itself, the energy, the hide, gives the powers of the animal kingdom to the shaman, the person running the drum. So I look for animals in my hide of my drum all the time. Sometimes there's a being there from another timeline is what I kind of see it as. But when we're um, striking the drum, this is calling in for the power of the thunder and the rumbling of the earth herself to really quake. And it's inviting us into a trance-like state where healing and prophecy can literally happen. We get other worldly musings or news. So the message is for us to really take this bold step into our own personal journey through the drum, through this invitation. Because we have the forces today, both of heaven and of earth, that are aligned behind us. They're supporting us effortlessly. So it's time to take that action. And it's really not a time to push against the river, the threads of the current. Um, the current's going to take us exactly where we want to go once we jump in and distrust it. So just collecting all of our power tools, if we will, and also having that innate courage because it's going to be a wild, magical journey, a great ride, just allowing ourselves to be carried by the rhythm of what is really essentially in all of our lives. Um, just some thought there, some insight. Um, but the first card, what's curious, is the corn was actually in number 10, which is actually the energy of today, which is Taurus energy, the Taurus degree in the season of Capricorn. So again, there's some super juice in the alignment there as well. 
And then also I had um, some people comment on the show yesterday, and I'm so sorry I forgot your names. Um, it didn't get saved in the comment area for some reason, but I did recognize that you were there. But, however, I still pulled cards for you anyway. So, first off, we have the Sorcerer um, reversed or upside right, right? But this is a source of dark power generally, and the Sorcerer represents a destructive aspect of our psyche and maybe a self-centered behavior that actually harms others. And it symbolizes the unconscious beliefs, the ideas that kind of, um, the ideas that were separate. There's conflict, there's scarcity. But since it's opposing, it's in the, it's opposing force, it's upside right. <laughs> um, you might want to ask yourself, have you been filling out a source because you faced with um, your own character flaws or your pain that you might have inflicted on others when you were out of alignment, Right. So what's called for is a radical ritual, a radical acceptance, um, something otherworldly offering. So you need to reconcile those darker aspects of your innate nature so you don't behave irresponsibly and cause more harm to yourself or to the ones you love. So it's time to come out of the denial, the river, and accept responsibility for your actions, your words, your deeds, whatever those are. So when you meet with the energy of the sorcerer with humility... This destructive power transforms into grace. So there's degenerative forces and there's generative forces. Neither is better or worse than the other. It's just um, the opposing force. You can always switch it around. And sometimes we do need a destructive degenerative force to transform things into grace, which we can use to serve ourselves and others in the highest elevated good. Maybe even make amends, you know. So it's definitely time for the right this time of year to cascade into it. And I would say actually to do it, it's going to set you free from the shadows and really allow us to step into our own personal light. Absolutely. And then we have, let's see, do, do. the ancient ones, which I love this card. So these are like the shamans of the old who defeated death and escaped from the tyranny of time. The ancient ones actually walked the earth as flesh and bone um, and they reside now in infinity in the absolute and they can actually counsel us if we say yes to our own personal calling and they're available to assist us to attain our full realization our potentials our prime directive so this card is really inviting us to reach into the future to help the earth a new destiny a new frequency for the earth so really you know go ahead and find out who you are becoming into the future, the Merlin effect, 10,000 years into that. So if we accept the invitation, this great power, these blessings of gratitude are actually going to come our way into those thread lines and allow us to craft a new destiny for ourselves. You know, and really don't hesitate to bite off more than you can chew because we have limited spiritual resources available right now, the unlimited um, frequencies. So as we close the doors to 2021, maybe you've already started to notice how your manifestations are already taking form. They're becoming materialized. They're taking shape. So the cards and the energy are all saying, you know, that our efforts have and they will all be paid off. Um, it's been a year of all the things, you know, an emotional roller coaster. We've been at a crossroads. We've had spiritual karma and also regular spirit growth, a topsy kind of turvy frequency there. And our energetic blueprint is going to be online. So, you know, what do you want to take with you on an adventure into 2022? And what are you leaving behind, you know? Are you emptying your cosmic closet of the toxic debris? That's kind of what I've been doing for months now, just getting rid of anything that's old in the sheds or otherwise, actually. Um, and then, there we go. Uh, we have a yin water ox day, two oxes in the house, a guai chow, um, but two yin waters as well. So the sem of the day and the branch of the month, the rat, again, there's no nature or fire, right? I would really go with nature um, as we transform and change our essence to wrap up 2021 and cascade into the light into 2022. And the Dagara cosmology this upcoming year is going to be a fire year, a masculine fire year. Um... So yeah, fire can either rage out of control or fire can warm up. 
two sides of that frequency, right? Being authentic, it's also the realm of our ancestors, it's our dreams, it's our visions, um, and so much more, <laughs> imagination. But the ox energy is creative. It comes in the wee hours of the morning, projecting into the future, being able to just follow through and complete our projects, having vision, and we can see, you know, sometimes it's the vision of that few, few of us can actually see, being that we're possibly self-sufficient, independent, moving forward with confidence. We got two oxes. You know, that might have been the frequency of this year as well. It's just plowing through the fields and moving forward with a different vision. Um, similar to like a redwood tree, just growing higher and higher and higher, being majestic up in the sky, up in the clouds, where we can see the world and all the splendor and the glory and the magic and the color, but also at the same time having a vision for the world as well as for ourselves. You know, maybe you can see beyond the common sight or visualize um, what everyday man sees and absolutely be, you know, in that frequency. But when this energy is opposing in that force, um, and we've got two of them, this tendency can be a little bit liverish. And liver is anger, it's irritability, it's being impatient. Um, and also, you know, you might implode with that anger. And insist that you aren't angry or not an angry person at all, but that frequency is there to implode. So that's like getting um, getting in touch with your fire energy, really. So this can actually express itself in interruptions on the body, like rashes or psoriasis. And we can actually tell a lot of what's going on on the inner world of the body through the energy of the skin, the reflex zones, the body morphology, the reflex zones on the face similar to the hands and the feet, but a different little um, symbology. But the liver houses the ethereal soul. It affects our eyes. That's why it's said that the eyes are really the window of the soul. So our eyes sometimes might appear drawn in or tired. Maybe you experience as a child, um, you were stifled or repressed. Maybe you weren't validated or honored for who you are as an individual. Maybe you've even been growing up with just people in authority um, so there's this element of immaturity, actually, this energy about the ox. So even if you are responsible, a responsible adult, simply because you weren't allowed to experience life and really that childlike wonder and grow as a child, you might have had adult caretakers who were really fearful for your safety and they do everything for you. It's kind of a disservice, right? So the liver ruling the ability to kind of execute and follow through, you might become a little bit more impatient with the little things and not be adept kind of to working with um, tools and machinery. Um, or maybe you tend to jump around from project to project and not complete anything. But if you are somebody um, who wakes up between 1 a.m. and 3 a.m. consistently, you could be pretty sure that there is some anger rearing its head, begging to be acknowledged, that emotion. So the antidote for this is to really seek avenues where we can grow into our fullest absolute potential and go out and experience more of life, have the adventure and just push yourself beyond the barriers that um, the boundaries that were set up as um, when we're children. So we really need to be validating by those in authority and given full reign to be who we are inside of us, the unique being that resides there. And our happiness, you know, will derive from being creative and expressive and transforming ourselves into a fully functioning human being that's creative. So we really need to move our life out of the black and the white and into the color. Um, and really, now that we're out the gateway, we're at this magical energy, not just because we're switching gears to a new year, but it's also a step up, if you will. Um, so we're at a cycle of completion, a new insight of our personal policy, but it's also a foundation out into the outer world because we're in this transformation so the shift is really on and it might feel a little bit wonky, um, like the bridge is falling apart and that we're on this unstable foundation when actually these feelings are just feeling juicy, but they really feel a little bit odd to our system. So we start to feel that little wonky energy. We feel straddled. So when that happens, add more love to your chalice. That's your investment to your soul, your etheric soul, the love chalice. And we all need more love in our chalice, you know. There's no need for the chalice to be overflowing and worry about that. Love in itself is the great provider. 
of really dissipating anything that makes us feel less than, just constantly pouring more love into yourself, even into the mirror. If you look into the mirror and can add more love as you're looking into the mirror, you know, the mirror might need it as well, that reflector part. So the power of love really is a thing versus the love of power. So whatever you do for sure today and into the galactic future, pour in the love of yourself first and create your own sacred space, your container that really provides you the space and the time to know your own heart to be true, whatever that looks like. And, you know, maybe in your third eye, your visual center, because it's online too, um, the third eye and the earth star, maybe put rooms into your palace and each room having its own unique space, a room for your mental clarity, the mind transmitter, where you say, hey, I'm, I'm not going to talk to you right now. Your heart's online, right? Or your feelings, the container of water, since we pulled the water card, and also emotion, right? The stones in our bones, maybe a room full of crystals or stones that hold the memories of the past, the memories of our ancestors. So you might even be aware of aspects of your life and just imagining your future life where you're upcycling these boundaries within yourself and maybe just take notes for yourself like where in this transmission do we need to change in our life and just holding space for the future that is galactic and thriving and sends the messages to the world those outer realms that really changes on its way where it's just time to upcycle those boundaries so they're not mismanaged into the new you who is coming into this New year, we're going through a birthing phase with all that water, um, leaving a water year in the Dagara, water in the card, water, water on the day and the month, just flowing into the future. So when feelings that are below the barometer of love, we need to add more love to that chalice. And that really is the shift today. You know, is that loving? Is that caring to the self? Um, not the other around us, making us feel less than in that love zone. Um, add love to them too. Their subtle energy chalice. So when we believe it to be real, they become eternal. So believe it first, seeing it will come later. And I would literally, I would make a list of all the juice that you have overcome and accomplished in 2021. I mean, I have an etheric list, let me tell you. And just be grateful for the juice. Be on the other side of it and even acknowledging the darkness for the shadows in an aspect of gratitude, right? Sometimes those energetic hiccups are there to move us through those trivial pursuits that appear real, but they're not. There's magic always on the other side of that. Um, and we really, we wouldn't have shifted if the shadows weren't there to really overcome. So they have a little memo in there too. So I would just be grateful for the stir in the pot, the ingredients, especially with the earth star online. You know, I would for absolutely do an offering to the earth today the shrines of the earth. I have Tingon and Timbalu. I greet them every morning in my village. Um, I'd add some fire for sure today, light a candle, hold a self-love vigil, wear earth tones, um, give yourself love and above today. Say it out loud. You're doing great. We have done great, right? So see all the galactic blessings the universe really has provided. And just knowing that we are on the receiving end of that juice, it's reciprocal. And carrying this way forward into 2022, be safe, be juicy. Um, and what I have been affirming, and I want you to as well, I would affirm that I am waking up to the best possible infinite timeline. And I would say that every morning for the next few days and see what switches in your glitches. So every day, just know you're waking up to an infinite timeline, your best timeline. And uh, yeah, inshallah, Ashe, make it a galactic juicy Super new year. Make sure you do your, uh, I'm doing a bunch of mantras myself, some wishes plus the new moon. Be sure to grab my musing moon meditation. It's galactic juicy. I've got some rituals on there as well. Bath rituals, water rituals. Um, and I'm not sure if I'll be live tomorrow, but I'm seeing probably it's a possibility. So with all of that, inshallah and uh, shea blessings to you. And as always, I will see you on the other side.